Air travel, an essential part of our lives, has a significant role in the concerning 12% of carbon dioxide emissions among all modes of transportation. This harsh reality amplifies the growing concerns about climate change, emphasizing the pressing need for a profound transformation within the aviation industry. The path to change, however, is neither quick nor easy. Yet, there's no denying that time is not on our side. As climate change accelerates, the urgency for a radical shift in aviation has reached its peak. The situation might seem dire, but amidst the challenges, a beacon of hope has emerged. The introduction of the remarkable microwave plasma fighter jet is a groundbreaking innovation. It might even hold the promise of reducing aviation's substantial carbon footprint and securing a more sustainable future for air travel. Join us as we delve into the world of the microwave plasma fighter jet that could change everything. As global warming looms over the future of both military and commercial aviation, a dedicated team of Chinese researchers is making waves in the engineering industry. Led by a seasoned expert researcher, this team has a vision to liberate modern airliners from fossil fuel dependence, enabling them to traverse the world powered solely by air and electricity. And the key to their ambitious goal lies in a remarkable, somewhat secretive ingredient plasma. A few years back, Chinese professor Zhao Tung delved into the use of microwaves in creating synthetic diamonds. But the twist in this story is when the brilliant professor has an epiphany, wondering if this technology could be harnessed to generate thrust. With that spark of inspiration, he assembled a team of experts at the Institute of Technological Sciences at Wuhan University. This journey began in the spring of 2020, when they set out to prove their bold theory. Moving on to their moment of revelation, Professor Tung and his dedicated team proudly published their findings in a paper titled Jet Propulsion by Microwave Aeroplasma. The game changer here is that their device, as per the paper, could produce propulsion by compressing air and ionizing it with microwaves using just air and electricity. Essentially, they were exploring the potential of creating thrust without the need for traditional fossil fuel-powered jet engines. Now, let's delve into the heart of this breakthrough, plasma. Plasma isn't a household word for many, but it's one of the four fundamental states of matter. Astrophysicists will tell you that it's not only the most abundant form of matter in the entire universe, but also what formed right after the Big Bang. Plasma naturally occurs when molecules get ionized at high temperatures or in the presence of high electric fields. You can find it in celestial bodies, the sun, and stars. And it's also something we can generate artificially by heating a neutral gas or applying a strong electromagnetic field, often with the help of microwaves or lasers. The practical applications of plasma are incredibly diverse, spanning from artificial crystal growth and medical treatments to powering television screens and aiding in environmental studies. But where plasma takes off, quite literally, is in space. The concept of using plasma in aviation is not entirely new. Scientists have been exploring plasma engines for space travel for some time, but the idea of fitting plasma engines into planes is relatively recent. The aim is to operate these engines above 30 kilometers in altitude, a region where conventional jet engines cannot work effectively. This technology could even take passengers to the edge of the Earth's atmosphere and beyond opening up new frontiers in aviation. Unlike what you might imagine from sci-fi movies, these thrusters don't rely on high voltage grids or elaborate anodes and cathodes to accelerate charged particles in the plasma. Instead, they utilize internally generated currents and potentials to move those ions. The result is a more efficient and safer method of propulsion that has become the go-to for many space agencies including the European Space Agency, the Iranian Space Agency, and NASA. We should note that ion thrusters like the one used on NASA's Dawn space probe are quite different from plasma engines. These engines propel spacecraft by expelling positive ions of gases like xenon. But an ion is positively or negatively charged depending on whether an atom has lost or gained an electron. One of the most prominent distinctions lies in the choice of propellant. Ion thrusters typically employ noble gases like xenon, known for their stability. In contrast, plasma thrusters exhibit greater flexibility by using air or various gases as propellants. 
This versatility makes plasma thrusters particularly intriguing, offering a wider range of applications. The ionization method is another differentiating factor. Ion thrusters rely on cathodes emitting electrons to ionize the propellant. In contrast, plasma thrusters utilize alternative ionization methods, often involving high concentrations of microwaves. Thrust levels are markedly different between the two technologies, too. Ion thrusters are known for their low thrust and high efficiency, making them suitable for long-duration space missions and station keeping. On the other hand, plasma thrusters generate higher thrust levels and are designed to operate not only in space, but also within Earth's atmosphere. Applications further set them apart. Ion thrusters have primarily found their place in space missions, where their precise control and energy efficiency are advantageous. Plasma thrusters, with their potential for higher thrust, are being explored for a broader range of applications, including aviation. Power requirements also distinguish these technologies. Ion thrusters typically demand less power, making them suitable for missions where power efficiency is crucial, such as deep space probes. In contrast, plasma thrusters require more power due to their higher thrust capabilities. Both types of thrusters operate in the vacuum of space, but plasma thrusters possess the unique ability to function within the Earth's atmosphere. This adaptability opens the door to potential uses in aviation, where traditional ion thrusters would be ineffective. Despite their promise, each thruster type faces its set of challenges. Ion thrusters must contend with maintaining a continuous source of xenon propellant, particularly on long missions. Plasma thrusters, on the other hand, face challenges in scaling up the technology for aviation applications and overcoming power supply limitations. Therefore, while there are parallels between plasma engines and ion thrusters, plasma engines have the potential to revolutionize aviation by eliminating fossil fuel reliance, carbon emissions, and greenhouse effects. However, as incredible as plasma propulsion is in the vacuum of space, it's not exactly an ideal fit for Earth's atmosphere. The spacecraft's plasma engines can only produce limited thrust here due to the substantial power needed for them to work efficiently. Engineers from around the globe have wrestled with adapting this technology for terrestrial use. The problem is when accelerated xenon ions, a common choice in these engines, interact with Earth's atmosphere, they lose much of their thrust to air resistance. So it's a challenging feat to make these engines work within our planet's boundaries. Now back to Professor Tang and his ambitious team. They believe that their plasma engine prototype has cracked this formidable barrier, allowing for more efficient use of plasma propulsion within Earth's atmosphere, instead of relying on substantial heat or powerful electrical fields to convert the stream of air into plasma, their engine uses concentrated microwaves generated from a microwave generator. An electrical spark in the tube's inlet heats the plasma in a quartz tube, leading to the concentration of hot plasma and, consequently, high pressure, precisely what's needed to generate propulsion in future planes. The team recorded that their prototype engine produced approximately 11 newtons of thrust with a 400-watt microwave jet prototype engine. Interestingly, about 4 newtons of that thrust resulted from the pressure of the compressed air alone. This means the prototype generates roughly 28 newtons per kilowatt, a promising figure. Yet, scaling up this technology for use in conventional plane engines presents its own set of challenges, it's a process that's easier said than done. Achieving this scale-up requires addressing factors like the flow rate of compressed air and the amount of microwave energy used. These intricacies pose the current challenges in adapting this innovative plasma thruster to power larger jet engines. Take, for example, the Variable Specific Impulse Magnetoplasma Rocket, or VASIMAR, and Electrothermal Thrusters, which are under development for potential use in spacecraft. These energy-hungry systems require a whopping 200 kilowatts of electrical power to produce a meager 1.12 pounds of thrust. The Vasimar engine represents a groundbreaking innovation in the realm of electric rocket engines, though. Its purpose extends across a broad spectrum of missions, offering the potential to revolutionize space travel. At its heart lies a unique and powerful mechanism. It harnesses the might of radio frequency waves, which are emitted through specialized antennas known as couplers. These waves play a pivotal role in the propulsion process. 
Their primary function is to heat the propellant gas, elevating its temperature to the point where it transforms into plasma. This plasma, characterized by extreme heat and electric charge, becomes the driving force for the engine. Vassimer's intricate use of an externally applied magnetic field sets it apart. This field serves a multifaceted purpose. It confines, guides, and ultimately accelerates the plasma. As a result, the plasma achieves the high velocities necessary for rocket propulsion. The plasma is directed to escape in a controlled manner, generating the thrust required for propulsion. Now you might wonder, in the vacuum of space where resources are abundant, meeting such energy demands might be feasible. But here's the catch. If we think about these engines on an aircraft, the added weight of the required power generation equipment could be an insurmountable challenge. It could make conventional jet engines look much more practical in comparison. And there's more. Plasma engines can get incredibly hot during operation, to the point where they risk melting everything around them. This potential for extreme heat-induced damage can lead to system failures. This challenge is referred to as plasma erosion, and it can gradually wear away the thruster's cavity and support structure, which over time can spell the failure of the entire system. To take a small-scale laboratory prototype to a fully functional electric plasma thruster, the researchers in Wuhan will need to conduct extensive tests using different materials and construction techniques to find the perfect balance between potency and safety. It's a formidable task, but they're committed to exploring every avenue. They have a measuring setup crafted from robust materials, utilizing quartz and steel, designed to withstand the extreme temperatures and conditions associated with plasma propulsion testing. The use of quartz and steel in the measuring setup reflects the precision required in this research. Quartz is chosen for its high resistance to heat and its ability to withstand the intense conditions of the thruster's operation. Steel provides durability and structural support, ensuring the setup can withstand the forces and pressures generated during testing. Also, as with any groundbreaking innovation, there are skeptics and critics. The idea of fundamentally altering aviation by harnessing microwave aeroplasma thrust is met with excitement and hesitation. Let's consider the skepticism and doubts of some Western analysts. MIT professor Steve Barrett, for instance, is quite critical of the Wuhan team's claims. He asserts that the physics and measurements used by the Chinese researchers are fundamentally flawed. According to Barrett, it's almost like heating a stovetop pressure cooker until the valve rattles and calling it thrust. However, pressure cookers don't fly. Furthermore, there are some peculiarities in the data released by the Wuhan team. Some experts have pointed out that the paper needs more information about the highest microwave power levels when the Chinese prototype reaches maximum airspeed. This lack of transparency raises questions. It could indicate serious issues with the engine's performance at higher power levels. Or it might simply be because the prototype hasn't been tested under those conditions yet. In the world of cutting-edge technology and innovation, skepticism is healthy. It drives rigorous testing and analysis, pushing researchers to explore and address potential flaws. This isn't just about the potential of plasma propulsion but about ensuring that any breakthrough is thoroughly vetted and safe for real-world applications. As these challenges are confronted and questions answered, we'll get a clearer picture of the feasibility of this transformative technology. Also, the progress made with the plasma engines has pushed further innovation in the electrification of jet engines. In the past, electrification efforts mainly focused on auxiliary equipment like hydraulic pumps and fuel supply devices. However, as the world collectively shifts towards decarbonization and addressing the challenges of climate change, it has become increasingly evident that conventional approaches have limitations in curbing exhaust emissions. To tackle this issue head-on, recent years have seen another endeavor to eliminate or significantly reduce exhaust gas emissions by electrifying the very heart of the aircraft, the engine itself. This ambitious undertaking is known as the MORE Electric Engine, or MEE, initiative. At its core, MEE revolves around deploying technologies that enable electrical propulsion, replacing mechanical, hydraulic, or pneumatic systems that have traditionally powered various aircraft components. Let's break it down. Traditionally, 
the power needed to drive critical components like fuel pumps and hydraulic systems was sourced directly from the jet engine's power and bleed air. However, with the advent of MEE, a transformative shift occurs. These power-hungry components are now driven by electric motors. The innovative approach not only alleviates the load on the engine, but also sets the stage for substantial reductions in carbon dioxide emissions. Another noteworthy step in the direction of greener aviation is the incorporation of Sustainable Aviation Fuel, or SAF, a biofuel into aviation fuel. This sustainable alternative, combined with other initiatives like enhancing the size of propulsion fans, has led to improvements in fuel consumption. However, it's crucial to recognize that these initiatives, while commendable, have predominantly focused on auxiliary systems surrounding the jet engine and fuel. The big challenge lies in achieving significant reductions or completely eliminating exhaust gases. In the pursuit of fully electrified aviation, the industry faces the task of bringing electrification to the forefront of the engine itself, paving the way for cleaner, more efficient, and environmentally friendly flights. International bodies such as the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO, and the International Air Transport Association, IATA, have set ambitious targets to cut carbon dioxide emissions in half by 2050 compared to 2005 levels. The stakes are high, and traditional approaches involving the electrification of auxiliary engine components and enhancements in fuel efficiency are no longer sufficient to meet these lofty goals. As a result, all eyes in the aviation world have turned to the electrification of aircraft engines as a game-changing technology. This electrification not only has the potential to accommodate the anticipated surge in aviation demand in the coming years, but also holds the key to significantly reducing exhaust emissions. Realizing that we can potentially replace conventional jet engines with electric motors while developing plasma engines is reshaping the aviation landscape. This paradigm shift underscores the urgency for aviation-related research institutions and aircraft manufacturers to focus on the development of electric motors. There are two primary approaches to these electric engine systems, each with unique advantages and applications. First, there's the pure electric system, which relies solely on electric motors to generate propulsion. This approach presents the exciting prospect of nearly eliminating engine exhaust gases. Second, the hybrid system represents a middle ground, combining the power of a traditional jet engine with an electric motor. The hybrid system leverages the strengths of both technologies to achieve a balance between performance and environmental impact. The electrification of aircraft engines signifies a pivotal moment in aviation history. It's a journey that takes us beyond the limits of conventional propulsion systems and propels us into an era where sustainability and efficiency are at the forefront. As researchers and manufacturers invest in the development of electric engines, the aviation industry is poised to make a profound contribution to the global effort to combat climate change. Interestingly, BA Systems, the lead contractor on the UK's next-generation fighter jet, the Tempest, has even raised the prospect of powering this cutting-edge aircraft with electricity, potentially replacing traditional jet fuel. The implications of such a shift are undeniably promising for the environment. However, there are valid concerns about the readiness of electric propulsion systems by the time the jet is scheduled to enter service in 2035. As per reports from Bloomberg, BAE Systems is exploring a broad spectrum of possibilities for the Tempest fighter. The company has made a significant move by enlisting the expertise of Williams Advanced Engineering a renowned name in the motorsports industry with a specialty in developing high-performance batteries for race cars. Their involvement in the Tempest project brings valuable insights into battery management and cutting-edge cooling technology, pivotal in any electric or hybrid propulsion system. The Tempest fighter project was unveiled to the world in 2018 at the RAF Farnborough Air Show, marking a milestone as the first British fighter in several decades. More than just another fighter jet, the Tempest is hailed as one of the first sixth-generation fighters, boasting capabilities that surpass even the advanced fifth-generation aircraft like the American F-35 and the Russian Su-57. With its dual engines and impressive features, the Tempest is set to redefine the landscape of aerial warfare. One of the standout features of this next-generation fighter is its transition into the digital age. The Tempest has a helmet-enabled virtual cockpit enhancing pilot awareness and control. 
Furthermore, integrating artificial intelligence into its systems promises to optimize performance, offering new strategic and tactical capabilities dimensions. In addition to these advancements, the Tempest's armament includes cutting-edge laser weapons, solidifying its reputation as a formidable and forward-looking military asset. The potential electrification of the Tempest fighter represents not only a technological leap, but also a crucial step toward reducing the environmental footprint of military aviation. This development aligns with the global commitment to reducing carbon emissions and combat climate change. However, the challenge lies in the timeline. Developing, testing, and deploying electric or hybrid propulsion systems for a fighter of this caliber is no small feat. The complex engineering, safety considerations, and rigorous testing required make it uncertain whether such a system will be fully operational and reliable by the planned entry into service in 2035. Nonetheless, the very fact that electrification is even under consideration for a fighter as advanced as the Tempest underscores the dynamic and evolving nature of aviation technology. It is a testament to the continuous pursuit of innovation and efficiency in an era where sustainable practices and environmental responsibility are increasingly prominent. Therefore, while the Chinese researchers are still making headway with the plasma engine, there is still an opportunity for us to reduce the carbon emissions in our society using other options. Thanks for watching. While you're still here, click on the link appearing on your screen to watch another of our interesting videos. See you there.